I'd like to thank my friends, my family, my... Um, excuse me, can I finish? Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times award-winning speeches got cut off awkwardly. We're taking a look at times where award show speeches were awkwardly cut short, either by the dreaded playout music or by an unforeseen force. Let's get to it. Number 10, Tommy Wiseau, 75th Golden Globe Awards. Whether you think The Room is the worst movie ever made, the best worst movie ever made, or a twisted masterpiece, nobody ever expected to see Tommy Wiseau on a televised award show. First person I have to thank is the man himself, Tommy Wiseau. Come on up here, Tommy! When James Franco won a Golden Globe for playing Wiseau, he welcomed the disaster artist himself onto the stage. Wiseau seemed to misread the situation, thinking that Franco was going to let him talk. Wiseau went for the mic, but Franco wrangled him away. While Franco proceeded to praise his influence, Wiseau didn't even get a word in. Granted, it wasn't Wiseau who won the award, but the moment was awkward nonetheless. Maybe Franco would have allowed Wiseau a moment to speak if the music didn't start playing over his own speech. Golden Globes, so what? I'm not invited. I know they don't want me, guy with axe and long hair, so I show them. Number 9, Guillermo del Toro, 75th Golden Globe Awards. Oh, <laughs> wow. I was hoping to wipe my nose with this. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro is one of the most ambitious directors working today. For a while, he was also one of the most overdue filmmakers on the awards circuit. When he won his first Golden Globe for The Shape of Water, del Toro was finally given an opportunity to bask in the spotlight. For 25 years, I have handcrafted very strange little tales made of motion, color, light, and shadow. And in many of these instances, in three precise instances, these strange stories, these fables have saved my life. He gave a passionate speech about how monsters and the movies saved his life. Then as the speech reached its emotional climax, the music started playing. Del Toro wasn't having it. And I wouldn't be here. Uh, lower the music, guys, one second. Uh, it's taken 25 years. Give me a minute. The music subsequently halted as Del Toro got in a few more thank yous. Well, that was a mostly heartfelt moment. Thank you very much. Number 8, Joaquin Phoenix, 77th Golden Globe Awards. To my fellow nominees, we all know there's no all the bleeps and rambling aside, Joaquin Phoenix came off as very gracious and humble during his Golden Globes acceptance speech for Joker. He even applauded his fellow nominees, asserting that there's really no such thing as the best actor. Phoenix's speech also took several political turns. It's really nice that so many people have come up and, and sent, uh, sent their well wishes to Australia, um, but we have to do more than that which culminated with him saying that the industry should do more than send Australia well wishes in the midst of the devastating bushfires, and criticizing Hollywood's non-eco-friendly use of private jets. It was at this moment that Phoenix got played off. We don't have to take private jets to Palm Springs for the war sometimes, or back, please. And I'll try to do better, and I hope you will too. Thank you so much for putting up with me. I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful for this night and all of you, thank you. Maybe it was because Phoenix's speech was already running long. Considering that the Globes went vegan that night though, many felt it was hypocritical when they denied Phoenix a chance to finish his thoughts on climate change. Number 7, Rosario Dawson, the 14th ALMA Awards. I want to say thank you distinguished members of the National Council of La Raza and the ALMA, ALMA Awards for acknowledging and presenting me with this humbling recognition. In 2013, the ALMAs singled out Rosario Dawson with the Outstanding Commitment to Cause and Community Award. Since this special award was for activism, you'd think that Dawson would be given all the time she needed to spread her empowering message. Oh no. Oh no, it's a really good speech, I promise. While Dawson made her message loud and clear, the folks behind the scenes sent a mixed message when they prematurely played the music. So 200 countries and terror around the world to end the cycle of violence that cripples our girls, boys, and women alike to vote Latino summits that encourage, inspire, and educate our youth to not only register and vote, but how to run for office, build campaigns, and be the effective advocates and activists they hope to be. Skimming her iPad, Dawson started speed reading through her meticulously written speech. Although the audience kept applauding Dawson, the 
music continued to tune in and out. Dawson was still speaking when she got cut off entirely as the telecast went to commercial. For a show about recognizing American Latino artists, the producers didn't seem all that interested in giving Dawson a voice. <laughs> Number 6. Sterling K. Brown 69th Primetime Emmy Awards Before anything like this happened for your boy, uh, I was a fan. For his performance on This Is Us, Sterling K. Brown became the first African American to win the Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series Emmy since Andre Brower almost two decades earlier. I just want to say, Mr. Brower, whether it is at Stanford University or on this Emmy stage, it is my supreme honor to follow in your footsteps. This historic victory was a long time coming, but it didn't translate into a very long acceptance speech. After thanking his cast members, Brown was about to acknowledge his show's writers, directors, and producers when the music chimed in. Our writers, you are our life's blood. You can play, you can play, you can play. I didn't get that loud, nobody got that loud music. As the music grew louder and the camera zoomed out, Brown eventually left the stage. Although Brown felt no ill will towards anyone, he later joked on The Late Show that Nicole Kidman gave a much longer speech at the ceremony, but nobody interrupted her. Yes, Listen, man, er not everybody can be pretty Australian white women who have won Oscars in the past. So I knew that my... <laughs> 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 Not that I'm blaming her. That's two uncomfortable moments for the price of one. Number five, Adele, 32nd Brit Awards. Thank you so much. Adele was on fire in 2012, winning the Brit Award for British Album of the Year. Being the biggest award of the night, Adele naturally got a substantial amount of time to speak, right? Actually, the recording artist barely got more than a few words in when host James Corden told her that she needed to wrap things up. I'm so sorry. And I can't believe I'm about to cut, cut off. Me off. I'm so sorry. Can I just say then, goodbye, and I'll see you next time round, yeah? <laughs> Adele went on to clarify that the finger wasn't directed at her fans, but the suits who cut her off. Um, so I'm sorry if I offended anyone, but the suits offended me, so uh, thank you very much for all of your support. Corden later explained that he felt awful about the whole ordeal, but was pressured by the producers to close out the show. It just felt awful. Did you speak to her afterwards? Yeah, well, I ran them? straight to her room. Oh, Adele, you left no goodbye, and not a single word was said. Send that everywhere so all the fans see it, because I don't want them thinking I was swearing at them, all right? <laughs> Number four, Drake, 61st Annual Grammy Awards. It's like the first time in, in Grammy's history where I actually am who I thought I was for a second, so I like that, that's really nice. Drake has made it no secret that he's not the biggest fan of the Grammys, boycotting the award show altogether in 2018. To the surprise of many, Drake did attend the following year when he won Best Rap Song for God's Plan. That doesn't mean he had a change of tune, however. You've already won if you have people who are singing your songs word for word. The Canadian rapper used this opportunity to tell his peers that award shows are opinion-based, and the real victory is knowing that loyal fans are lining up to see their concerts. Drake seemingly had more to say, but got cut off before he could continue. But next, a special Grammy performance by Diana Ross. The producers reportedly offered Drake a chance to come back out, but he instead settled for sharing an Instagram post that read, too raw for TV. Number three, Yoda, 12th MTV Movie Awards. Hmm, grateful am I to this award received. Christopher Lee wasn't in attendance at the 2003 MTV Movie Awards, but a CGI Yoda did show up to accept their award for Best Fight. Levitating onto the stage in his power chair, Yoda thanked George Lucas, his cast members, and for some reason, Vin Diesel. Since Yoda's thank you list was so long, it was only a matter of time until the music began playing. Greedo, Steve Gutenberg, Ki Adimundi, Yado, Lamassu. Play off Yoda, no one does. Being a Jedi master though, Yoda was able to silence the orchestra with a wave of his hand. Making it clear that nobody forces him off stage, Yoda proceeded to drop some modern lingo and gave one final shout out to Queen Latifah. It's about as awkward as the Star Wars prequels, but at least this bit was intentionally funny. Languages I speak, and one of them is yours. Representing for you and all my peeps and Agabow will always go to be. Number 2. Russell Crowe, 55th British Academy Film Awards. 
Russell Crowe was on the fast track to sweeping every major award show for his performance in A Beautiful Mind, especially after winning Best Actor at the BAFTAs. During his acceptance speech, the New Zealand native recited Sanctity, a poem by Patrick Kavanaugh. To be a poet, to not know you tried, to be a lover, and repel all women. Crowe was reportedly infuriated when the poem got edited out of the show's Australian broadcast. He allegedly confronted BAFTA producer Malcolm Gary at a hotel, pushing him up against a wall while swearing up a storm. You don't edit Russell Crowe's poetry, you testicle! Although he later apologized to Gary, it was nonetheless a PR nightmare for Crowe. At the Academy Awards a month later, Crowe lost Best Actor to Denzel Washington. One can't help but wonder if Crowe would have won his second Oscar had it not been for the controversy. Born in New Zealand in 64, a hot-headed actor named Russell Crowe. He loves to act, but he loves one thing more, fighting around the world. Well, I mean, Russell Crowe has never really been one for reasonable discussion. But our number one pick is even juicier. Before we get there, here are some honorable mentions. Uh, uh, I just want to say... women and let's face it if the mothers ruled the world there would be no yes please wrap it up you know what it took me nine years to get here suck it thank you i want to on a very personal note i want to say thank you to hillary clinton for your grace and grit and thank you my mother and sister i'm so proud of you mom before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Taylor Swift, 26th MTV Video Music Awards Yo, Taylor, I I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time! Even over a decade later, this remains one of the most infamous and talked about moments in award show history. Accepting the VMA for Best Female Video, Taylor Swift suddenly had the mic yanked away from her by Kanye West, who declared that Beyonce got robbed. Looking like a deer caught in the headlights, a speechless Swift just stood there with her award. Thankfully, Video of the Year would go to Beyonce. Who lets Swift have her moment? So I'd like for Taylor to come out and have her moment. West was asked to leave the ceremony, and the controversy continues to follow him in the form of countless parodies and memes. A lot of celebs know what it's like to be played off, but only Swift knows what it's like to get kanye off. Yeah, that's probably the ultimate award show interruption, like, of all time. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments or tweet me at Phoebe underscore WM. And check out this video.